Another bombshell lands in what seems to be a never-ending soap opera in Chicago politics. Mayor Lightfoot double backs and says, hold on, you're not retiring at the end of the month. No, you're fired. Monday morning, she gives a press conference. She gives an overt uh, statement, pretty matter of fact, but she says some things between the lines. And I'm going to break that down for you. What's not being said? What doesn't she want to reveal? Why doesn't she want to say things to embarrass uh, Mr. Johnson's family? What isn't being said? And what made her change her mind 180 degrees from just a month ago? Johnson of the inspector. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today I'm announcing that I terminated Eddie Johnson's employment as superintendent of the Chicago Police Department for cause effective immediately. Upon reviewing the materials as to Eddie Johnson of the Inspector General's ongoing investigation regarding the events of October 16th and early morning hours of October, it has become clear that Mr. Johnson engaged in a series of actions that are intolerable for any leader in a position of trust, particularly the head of the Chicago's actions. There are three reasons for this decision. First, the finding for the, of the Inspector General's report regarding Mr. Johnson, which I recently reviewed, makes clear that Eddie Johnson engaged in conduct that is not only unbecoming, but demonstrated a series of ethical lapses and flawed decision-making that is inconsistent with having the privilege of leading the Chicago Police Department. Second, Johnson intentionally misled the public in a press conference he called on October 17, 2019. He was not caught off guard, and he had plenty of time to choose his words. And the choice he made was a communicated narrative replete with false statements, all seemingly intended to hide the true nature of his conduct from the evening before. Finally, just like with the public, Eddie Johnson intentionally lied to me several times, even when I challenged him about the narrative that he shared with me. He maintained that he was telling the truth. I now know definitively that I known these facts at the time, I would have relieved him of his duties as superintendent then and there. I certainly would not have participated in a celebratory press conference that it was acceptable. I've been advised by the Inspector General that his investigation as to others remains ongoing. I will not comment today on specific details as they relate to Mr. Johnson. Well, at some point, the IG's report may become public and those details may be revealed. I don't feel like it is appropriate or fair to Mr. Johnson's wife or children to do so at this time. That Mayor Lightfoot is a completely different mayor than we saw roughly a month ago, November 7th, when Eddie Johnson announces his retirement. And it's with that in mind that I want to announce my retirement today. It's time for someone else to fill these four stars to their shoulders. To Mayor Lloyd Lightfoot for being a trusted friend and partner and continue. I want to thank the superintendent for your lifetime of dedication and transition. For now, I am grateful to share that the superintendent has agreed to serve uh, for the end of the year. I want to reiterate to the superintendent and to the city that he continues to have my unbreakable. There you go. As you see in this picture, that is uh, Superintendent Johnson's wife who's also a Chicago police officer, his son, who's also a Chicago police officer. But what made Mayor uh, Lightfoot do that 180? What did she find out? And she almost foreboded. She, she, uh, she said, for now, as she knew the Inspector General's report on the incident of the night of October 17th had not come out yet. So let's go through the timeline. October 17th, um, a citizen, who that citizen was, we'll get into that later, um, calls and says, a man is slumped over at the wheel at 34th and Aberdeen. Um, please come. The radio's transmissions are going through normally. Once the officers arrive at the location, it goes radio silent. There's no more radio traffic. Uh, the next morning, Superintendent Johnson calls him a press conference. He calls a press conference. He controls the narrative like the, the uh, mayor says. In um, her December 2nd press conference, he says he was having an episode. He didn't take his blood pressure medication. He felt dizzy. He felt tired after he was out a night with his friends. Um, and uh, he, he pulled over and he fell asleep. Now, it came out a couple days later that he told the mayor privately that he did have a couple drinks. But that was not the reason in which 
uh, this happened. This was a medical emergency. What did we find out since then? More importantly, what did Mayor Lightfoot find out? Well, she found out that uh, Superintendent Eddie Johnson on the night of October 16th was drinking at the Sears Cafe. Who was he drinking with? A member of his um, security detail, a female member of his security detail who he hired on um, as soon as he started as superintendent. What did they see on that tape when the inspector general looked at the, the, the tape from the restaurant? Well, he was making out with this woman who was not his wife, who's been on his security detail for about three hours. They drank, canoodled, and made out. Now, the restaurant closes at 9 o'clock. He doesn't get pulled over or found, I'm sorry, until 12.30. So either the, the, the Sears Cafe stays open late for him to be in private with this woman, or he goes somewhere after with this woman. I don't know those details. Now, it has been reported, and it's alleged, that the person that called 911 was indeed that female Chicago police officer that's his driver and his security detail. Now, that's alleged. I don't know if that's true or not. What I do know is this. Under repeated questioning, the mayor hinted strongly at some kind of smoking gun that made the facts she already knew infinitely worse. Noting that the Inspector General's investigation as to others involved remains ongoing. The mayor added, while at some point the Inspector General's report may become public and those details may be revealed, I don't think it's appropriate or fair to Mr. Johnson's wife or children to do so at this time. Because she knows inside the Inspector General's report, they saw the video uh, at the bar of him making out with the woman he put on his security detail when he started working uh, as a superintendent. Um, as to others, that ought to have a bunch of people worried over there in uh, District 9 where it happened because uh, Lori Lightfoot ran on a platform of taking scalps, uh, transparency. See, at the end of the day, I kind of feel on a personal level, I know who's responsible for this. I think we can put the the blame on one man's shoulders and one man's shoulders only and be done with it. Because this could be nobody else's fault but this man's. That's right. Where was Lieutenant Larry Snelling? The suffering fleck of tass spitting on everybody. Sergeant turned lieutenant uh, over there in seven. Where was he at? Where was Eddie Murphy if he got the role as radio? As one of his subordinates put it, it's like having Devin Hester as a supervisor. So there you have it, the days of our lives that has become uh, the soap opera of Chicago politics. The federal consent decree, the first deadline came. They were supposed to um, have 50 uh, things done among the guideline, among the timeline. Uh, they got 13 out of the 50 done. So uh, Mayor Lightfoot is cleaning house. Disorderly product news reporting from Chicago, Chicago. Shit, oh, it's making me sick. Oh, my God. Would they hurry up with this investigation? Anyways, it's sort of the product news. Over and out. But there is one person that's not here today. We're in Chicago. I said, where is he? I want to talk to him. In fact, more than anyone else, this person should be here because maybe he could learn something. And that's the superintendent of Chicago police, Eddie Johnson. A few days ago, Johnson said, quote, the values of the people of Chicago are more important than anything President Trump would have to say. I don't think so. Because that's a very insulting statement. After all I've done for the police, and I've done more than any other president's ever done for the police. From the beginning, and... Here's a man that could not bother to show up for a meeting of police chiefs, most respected people in the country, in his hometown, and with the President of the United States. And you know why? It's because he's not doing his job. And Chicago has the toughest gun laws in the United States. That doesn't seem to be working too well, does it? 
and a lot of you people know exactly what I mean. But under Johnson's leadership, they certainly don't protect. Then you have the case of this wise guy, Jesse Smollett, who beat up himself.